verses of one particular surah that is in the Quran that continues to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives and that is nothing but surah mulk. So surah mulk is one of the most important surahs in the Quran, ya khuti, one of the most important surahs in the Quran because of the fact that the surah focuses on uh, seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through one important means and that is to demonstrate the power and the might and the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to see a surah that creates that impression of fear, total absolute fear in the heart of a, of a slave of God who believes in Allah in the last day, then this is the surah because it creates that awe, that inspiring awe of the massive magnitude of the power of the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why Allah starts with the surah by talking about Tabarakalladi bi adihil mulk. Glory be to the king, the one who has the dominion of the heavens and the earth and all the power in his hands and ends by talking about the most basic thing that we need in order to survive, which is water. And that's why Allah says, do you see all human beings? If you don't listen to what I've just said in this surah, that if the water that is with you, the water with which you drink, and that you are thirsty, but with, without which you will die within a day or two, right? This water, if someone was to prevent the water from you, who is there other than Allah who can send the water back? And we know that every single thing depends on water. Whether you think everything surrounds the economy, guess what? The economy surrounds agriculture, guess what? Agriculture depends on water. If you think the economy is there, then the economy depends on Cattle, cattle depends on water. Everything depends on water. Our life, our living depends on water. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demonstrates His magnificent power through this surah in Surah Mulk. This surah, Ya Khuti, was revealed for the most arrogant of sinners. We know we have sinners and all people are sinners. I am a sinner, you are a sinner, everyone's a sinner. But the best of sinners are the ones who repent. And Jannah and Jahannam were created both for sinners. Jahannam was not created just for those who sin. Also, Jannah was created for those who sin. But Jannah was created for those who sin and then repent. But Jahannam was created for those who sin but don't repent. So, Yekhwati, this surah was revealed for those people who are the most arrogant sinners. The most arrogant, haughty, proud sinners. Those who think that, you know, I am the greatest. And, I, and there's no one greater than me. And who is that that can take me to account? And I will never die. And no, I am, I'm the one who has the most money and the wealth. Who is there greater in wealth and money and women and children than me? So this surah is for the most arrogant of the most arrogant of people. It is for this reason why Ikhwati, this surah uh, deals with the topic of tawbah from a very different way. Without telling you to repent, Allah causes you to repent. Without telling you to repent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you repent. Why? Because you are filled with an understanding of the magnitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's learn about this surah, the surah that was revealed in Makkah by the ijma of the scholars of tafsir. This surah was revealed in Makkah. So it is a Makkiyah. And the surahs of Makkah in origin are the surahs that deal a lot with the Day of Judgment, a lot with Jahannam, a lot with Jannah. And by Allah, it, it, it deals a lot with the reality that we are all facing. Yeah, some of you, as we take the 11 surahs in, uh, inshallah, in Juz Tabarak, may be surprised why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Jahannam a lot. Does it not sound demotivating? Allah is always talking about the negative aspect. No, the reality is Allah is not talking about Jahannam so you feel negative. Allah is talking about Jahannam now so that you feel positive that Allah is warning you that there is something very severe and very serious that you are not paying attention to. Just like the Prophet ﷺ said, if you knew what I know, you would not find pleasure in sleeping with your wives. He said another authentic hadith, if you knew what I know, you would not bury your dead. He said another authentic hadith, if you knew what I would know, you would cry more and you would laugh less. If you knew what I know. Right? If you knew what I know. So, Ikhwati, this is the reality that we must connect with today, which is the reality of Akhirah in Surah Mulk. Let's continue, inshallah. Surah Mulk is divided into, uh, into a number of parts. The first part of Surah Mulk talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His greatness and His blessing and about the sky and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the sky in this amazing glory and this amazing greatness. He talks about the sky as an example to show you the perfectness of the creation of Allah Azawajal. And if a creation, which is the sky, is so perfect, imagine how perfect Allah is. And that is why we say as-salam. Allahumma anta as-salam. Oh Allah, you are the salam. What does salam mean? Salam means peace. But salam, the name of Allah, does not mean peace. Salam, the name of Allah, means perfectness. 
perfectness. He is the perfect God. As-salam. Why is he as-salam? Because he is perfect in every way. Perfect in his names, perfect in his attributes, perfect in every single way. His words are perfect, his actions are perfect, and that is why there's no blemish in anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. It, the blemish is only in our minds, only in our inability to understand and comprehend. And that is why Allah is as-salam. So Allah gives one example of the perfectness of Allah azza wa jal, and that is to talk about the, the skies, and look at the excellence of the skies, how perfect is it? So therefore, you will know how great Allah is. Then the Quran, in the second part of the first page, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves into talking about as people are being thrown into Jahannam, there is a conversation that will take place between them and the Khazanati Jahannam and the 19 angels that look after Jahannam.